Joachim Neu from Stanford University, and uh, they will be discussing the availability accountability dilemma and its resolution via accountability gadgets. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, my name is Joachim Neu, and uh, uh, I'm presenting joint work with my colleague uh, Nosra Tash and with our advisor, David Che. Um, I hope you all see the slides. Uh, if you're curious, um, we have a preprint on archive. Uh, the link is down here. Um, you can go check out uh, the paper. And let's get started. So uh, in this talk, uh, we will have uh, three key takeaways. The first one is a dilemma, which is that no single ledger protocol can be available and accountable. The second point is a proposed resolution of this dilemma, which is to instead of having a single ledger protocol, how about we have two nested ledgers, one of which is available and the other one accountable. And then uh, as a third point, um, I'm going to show a black box construction of such a checkpointing mechanism from any accountable consensus protocol. And this is what we call accountability gadgets. Let's backtrack a little bit uh, and look, look at one of our uh, favorite protocols, the longest chain protocol. Um, roughly here's how it works. So there's a bunch of participants uh, in the network and they try to build a blockchain together, which you see here on the left. And okay, it's pretty straightforward. Someone puts out a block, right? And then the blockchain grows. And eventually uh, we're going to confirm uh, some of these blocks and that's what makes up our ledger. Um, the longest chain protocol is interesting. Uh, it has the following interesting property. Um, which is if somebody forces a bunch of the participants in the network offline, then the remaining participants can still keep growing this longest chain. Uh, so we call this, this protocol is available under dynamic participation. The problem with this is uh, if these nodes um, are not really forced offline, but instead they just you know, decided to leave and, and kind of do their own thing, um, then they might be building a parallel chain. and um, that eventually leads to a safety violation, right? There is a inconsistency here um, to ledgers. Um, and you might ask, okay, who, who is to blame now, right? Um, the way I frame this is, well, you know, they, they weren't forced offline, they left. Uh, so they would be to blame, but um, how can a third party looking at the protocol from outside uh, determine this? There is another class of protocols uh, which are very dear to us, uh, which are proposed and vote protocols. Um, they work slightly differently. Um, somebody puts out a proposal, uh, people take a vote. If uh, two thirds uh, endorse the block, then this block gets a special status. Uh, for simplicity, let's just say it's confirmed. Um, so it doesn't matter the remaining one third votes. Um, now, if we have a safety violation, to have a safety violation in such a protocol, right? we need two blocks. And then both of them need to get two thirds signatures. But um, just by counting, right, uh, there aren't enough signatures to really do that. So the only way this can happen is if there are a bunch of adversarial nodes who essentially double sign on blocks. Um, and in this case, uh, we can do something interesting, which is we inspect these uh, sets of signatures um, and we can point out who must have violated the protocol because it's a protocol violation to vote, to vote more than once. We call this accountable safety because uh, if there is a safety violation, uh, then we can hold participants accountable, meaning we can point out who, who's, who's at fault uh, and we can, for example, slash their stake um, or you know, there might be other external means to the protocol to hold them accountable. Uh, the drawback of this is uh, that these protocols are not available, right? If uh, somebody again forces part of the network offline, then uh, we do not get enough signatures uh, to move the protocol ahead. And so the protocol stalls. So this is not available. So a natural question is, is this dichotomy particular to the longest chain and propose and vote protocols? Or is there anything more fundamental here? Um, in particular, can any protocol achieve availability and accountability simultaneously. And uh, the content of the availability accountability dilemma is no. And the argument works as follows. Suppose we had a protocol that was both available and accountable. Then let's look at the following execution. 
we have a bunch of honest nodes on the left and we have a bunch of adversarial nodes on the right. Um, each of these nodes, each of these groups uh, talk among each other. The honest guys, since they're honest, right, they're also trying to talk to the adversary, but the adversary really never talks back to them. So now if we have two clients, Alice and Bob, then uh, Alice uh, will hear a set of messages uh, from the honest guys um, and they will basically tell Alice, hey, we didn't hear from these other nodes. Uh, probably they're censored, um, forced offline. You should decide A. And uh, on the other hand, uh, the, uh, the other set of nodes uh, might tell Bob, hey, we, didn't, we also didn't hear from the others. They did, but uh, they can still pretend they didn't. Um, they're probably censored. You should decide B. Now we have assumed that this protocol is both available and accountable, right? So by availability, um, Alice eventually reaches the conclusion uh, that A was decided and Bob reaches the conclusion that B was decided. So this is a safety violation. And uh, since we assume that this protocol was accountable, uh, we would like to uh, hold somebody accountable now. So uh, suppose there is an accountability mechanism which Alice and Bob then uh, use in order to determine somebody who must have violated the protocol. And suppose uh, this accountability mechanism points out one of these adversarial nodes. Then here's the problem. This scenario is really indistinguishable from the scenario in which we switch the roles of honest and adversarial nodes, right? So um, since the two scenarios are indistinguishable, uh, the accountability mechanism in this case would have pointed to an honest node, uh, which is of course innocent and uh, that is not allowed, right? We, we only want to hold, we want our accountability mechanism to be such that it only points to adversarial nodes. So since we cannot have a single ledger that is always accountably safe and live under dynamic participation, we're proposing to resolve this dilemma in the following way. Um, rather than having a single ledger, how about we decompose the single ledger into two nested ledgers, an available full ledger and an accountable prefix ledger. The available full ledger is always safe and live under dynamic participation. And the accountable full ledger, uh, sorry, the accountable prefix ledger is always accountably safe and it is live if enough nodes are participating. And then it's really up to the clients to choose which of the two ledgers uh, they consider, they want to consider uh, if they uh, ask whether a certain transaction is confirmed. So if this is a high value transaction that should really not get uh, rolled back, then you might want to wait for it to enter the accountable prefix. If it's a low value transaction where speed is more important, then perhaps it's enough uh, uh, if this transaction has entered the uh, available full uh, part of the ledger. So this concludes the second part. Uh, now on to the third part, which is the construction of accountability gadgets. Um, the accountability gadgets, um, this is an, an, connects to an idea that uh, has been circulating uh, in various forms in the literature before. Um, it roughly works as follows. Uh, we start out with a longest chain protocol uh, where transactions enter and they're being ordered uh, in the usual way of a longest chain protocol. This forms the available ledger. The uh, longest chains are then periodically uh, fed into the accountability gadget. That means somebody uh, some leader within the accountability gadget proposes their longest chain for checkpointing. And then uh, there's a vote on whether or not uh, to uh, agree on this checkpoint. And the votes are tallied in a ledger that is maintained by any accountable consensus protocol. So this can be hot stuff, this can be whatever your favorite protocol here. Um, and then uh, after, uh, now this way we agree on which votes to count. And then uh, we, after these votes are interpreted, a checkpointing decision is reached. And this forms the accountable, uh, the accountable checkpoint ledger. And the checkpoint decisions are also fed back into the longest chain protocol so that the longest chain can uh, respect earlier checkpointing decisions. In practice, uh, here's what this looks like. So in the middle, you see the participants of the protocol on the left, you see the available longest chain view, the view on the available longest chain protocol. And on the right, you see the view on the accountable vote tally. 
So uh, nodes uh, build uh, blocks uh, in the longest chain protocol, right? Um, the usual way. At some point, uh, so this is what, what forms the available ledger, right? The longest chain. At some point, a node uh, proposes a new checkpoint. It says, how about we checkpoint this block TX5? Because this is my longest chain. And then other participants check, yeah, this is also my longest chain. I, I agree with this. Um, and they vote accept for this uh, block. And then if enough votes come together, uh, there is a checkpointing decision to checkpoint the block TX5. And uh, that then uh, leads to the new checkpoint. And this is how the, uh, that fragment of the available ledger transitions into the accountable prefix. Now, if an adversary uh, wants to build a longer chain off of the uh, like on a side chain which does not respect the latest checkpoint, then honest nodes are just going to ignore this. So honest nodes will from now on only build on top of the latest checkpoint. And so uh, new blocks come in and this grows the available ledger. And uh, this gives us the availability of that uh, available uh, ledger uh, of the two ledger protocol. And eventually somebody is uh, again going to propose uh, their longest chain for checkpointing. There's going to be a vote again. It's going to be a new checkpointing decision. And then the, this block transitions from the available into the accountable ledger again. This protocol is accountable because the vote tally is accountable. So if you wanted to change the checkpointing decision you, decisions, you would have to change the vote tally, but the vote tally is maintained by an accountable consensus protocol. And so uh, if you change the vote tally, then uh, I can point, you know, observers can point out uh, who changed the vote tally and, and who's to blame for the safety violation. This protocol has another uh, positive property, uh, which we call predictable validity. Um, it means the following. It means that if a participant proposes a block in the protocol, then they know at the time of producing the block, what will be the prefix uh, in the ledger of the transactions that they propose uh, to add to the ledger. And uh, the advantage of this is, or this is a, an, an important ingredient, an important prerequisite for very common light client and, and sharding techniques, uh, because this way we can make sure that no, no invalid transactions ever enter into the ledger and we do not have to later do some, some ledger sanitization, uh, which is more, more tricky for sharding or light client nodes uh, to, uh, to follow. We implemented this uh, construction uh, in, in kind of a prototype uh, where we just uh, picked some permissioned longest chain protocol. Uh, we picked uh, some hot stuff implementation. Uh, actually, the, the implementation of uh, uh, Antonio, who was uh, talking yesterday, we took, uh, took libp2p's uh, gossip subnetwork um, and we ran, so we ran this um, and, and one of our interests for, for, for this work is comparing it to uh, Gasper, which is kind of a simplified version of the Ethereum uh, 2 uh, beacon chain protocol. And uh, here you see a plot uh, of the average required bandwidth uh, versus the accountable ledger latency for our protocol and for Gasper. And you can see that uh, we can support roughly the same bandwidth and the same latency for uh, twice as many participants. I want to close with a comparison uh, to related work. I already mentioned earlier that uh, similar ideas you've probably already seen. Uh, it's been widely discussed both uh, in an academic as well as kind of a blockchain practitioner setting. So we're comparing here accountability gadgets to Ethereum 2, to finality gadgets, to snap and chat protocols, and to the checkpointed longest chain. In terms of protocols, a nice property of accountability gadgets is that we can use any accountable consensus protocol for checkpointing. This is uh, in contrast to Ethereum 2, for example, which uh, uses two quite particular protocols, LMD Ghost as underlay and Casper FFG as the finality gadget. Um, finality gadgets uh, support some underlay and they usually put some handcrafted finality gadget uh, on top, uh, which requires us to design new protocols and analyze them again, rather than relying on uh, existing protocols. Um, and the checkpointed longest chain 
uh, uses Nakamoto's longest chain as underlay and then uses Algorand BA on top. And again, this is uh, it's not straightforward to uh, swap out Algorand in that construction with uh, some other uh, protocol. In terms of accountability, uh, as, as the name says, accountability gadgets provide accountability. Uh, finality gadgets, uh, the situation is a bit mixed. It's a very diverse uh, set of protocols. Uh, some of them do, uh, some of them do not. Uh, in general, uh, it's not their design goal. Um, the check funded longest chain does not support accountability because Algorand BA is not accountable. In terms of security, um, we proved that uh, accountability gadgets uh, are secure. Uh, this is in contrast to Ethereum 2, uh, which is not secure as it's specified in Gasper. And finality gadgets, again, it's a quite diverse set of protocols. Uh, some from the more academic uh, camp uh, have rigorous security proofs. Uh, some that come more from uh, blockchain projects uh, do not. Um, and then in terms of predictable validity, uh, accountability gadgets uh, do satisfy this. Uh, snap and chat protocols uh, do not. And that's uh, a major drawback in terms of the application. If you want to know more about this work, uh, check out the preprint uh, on Archive. You'll find more information about uh, the, prototype, the prototype uh, that we developed with Hot Stuff as a countable protocol about the formalization of the dilemma and about the construction and the security analysis of the accountability gadgets. Thank you. <laughs>